fact, gold has dominated the commodities headlines this year, climbing 27 percent, hitting yet another all-time high this month. But oil hit a two-year high today as well. Silver has jumped 74 percent in 2010. Joining us now to sort out the latest in all of these commodities trades is Heist Gronewegen uh, from Silver Arrow, the founder of Silver Arrow Capital Management and Precious Metals Focused Hedge Fund. And we, we just see all of these commodities on a tear. You and I were just talking in the break about inflation. You say you can't see it anywhere, but you definitely see it in commodities. That's what's, correct. What's the problem? Well, you see it in food, um, commodities, and emerging markets inflation, I think. But the reason why we see um, you know, the commodities so strong is also because of the increased forecast for the U.S. economy. I mean, we're talking about now about 3 to 3.5% three for next year. And that adds to you know, anticipated demand for copper. And as was just mentioned, the supply is very tight. We just had a disruption, uh, a mine disruption in, in Chile. And that all adds to the, um, you know, to the strong price for copper. When is it fair, by the way, to say someone's cornering the market? Well, if you have 90% of the LME stocks uh, in copper, that uh, you know that that could uh, could be uh, that that is a strong warning signal. I think people should watch out, uh, very careful. Is that a problem? It could be a huge problem, yes. Um, but the way I look at the markets is, in fact, uh, I segment the, um, you know, the commodity markets in three segments. One is the BRIC countries emerging markets, so they're developing the middle class, and that's why you have a strong demand for the base metals. You have an undermining of the financial system, which boosts the demand for the precious metals. And then I also look at food, which is agriculture, fertilizers, and water. That is the segmentation I give to the to the commodity market. So that's the way I look at it. But let's talk about gold. I mean, the consensus is that inflation is not really going to be a problem. In fact, deflation is more of a risk. Mm, absolutely. We've warded off fears of financial <coughs> Armageddon. So what's driving up the price of gold right now? Well, I think uh, people are definitely not sure that uh, sustainability, as a lot of people want to believe, you know, is there in the, in the U.S. economy, for example. I mean, that's the reason why gold and silver also stay strong. I guess yeah? it's reason number two, right? The undermining of the financial system that must be the biggest driver. That's correct. I mean, look at the muni market. Yeah, The muni yields at the moment are trading above the uh, treasury yields, which is very unusual because the munis uh, are tax-free and they should trade below. The yields should be below the treasury market. So what it, it's indicating is basically risk. The risk is going up and people are afraid that, uh, as also Meredith Whitney said, that, you know, at least 50 to 100 munis could default. You, you have said, actually, on this program that you're expecting some sort of financial collapse as that's, early as the first quarter, the end of the first quarter of 2011. That's correct. You know, if you look at the S&P, then what you see is that the right hand of the right shoulder of, of the head and shoulders pattern in the S&P is being formed. Yeah. And what normally happens in a bear market that the max that, you know, a market can recover is about 78 percent. Here, which would and bring here you see the retracement there. Uh, you can see the shoulder that you're talking about. Exactly. That would mean that we would go back to around 1380 on the S&P. And that would fit in with what I think. I don't think that, you know, the growth is sustainable in the economy because I think you have almost two levels of economies working. I mean, one is the, you know, the middle class that is really facing a very difficult time. And the other economy is Wall Street, the quantitative easing, and everything looks kind of honky-dory, which I don't think is sustainable. Let's focus, though, right now on gold. I want to get your forecast, or, or is it kind of the sky's the limit? If we have a financial collapse, where does gold go? Uh, first, gold will come down because hedge funds will uh, liquidate all their um, liquid positions. Uh, we've seen yeah? them do this before in a crash. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. But then I think when that has been unwound, you see gold going through uh, between 1500 to 2000 even higher, depending what the calamities are. So, you know, your guess is as good as my guess. But the thing you have to remember then, if that happens, it means basically that paper money is worth nothing anymore. You know, you have to look at that equation, paper versus uh, a tangible or asset or which is money. Why the, which is why it's kind of the sky's the limit, depending on exactly. what kind of financial collapse are you expecting? <laughs> well, you know, I think that the debt levels are unsustainable, and I'm not the only one who's, uh, who's saying that. I mean, as I mentioned before, look at the muni market. Right, and Meredith Whitney says we could see hundreds of billions of dollars in uh, defaults in the muni market. Exactly, and look at uh, the numbers of Zillow. You know that uh, the, the the loss in in housing values in 2010 alone was 1.7 trillion, probably, uh, of which most in the second half after the sub, uh, subsidies expired. So you know this is not going to stop. And then if people are looking at the stimulus of 600 billion and the tax cuts of 858 billion, 
Yeah, I mean, that's being wiped out by a decline in home value. So, as I mentioned to you before, no inflation. You have deflation in the market. All right. Well, gold is mainly a financial asset. But what about that's these right. other precious metals that have more industrial mm -hmm. uses than gold, like silver, platinum, palladium? How are those going to perform next year? Well, I think at the moment they definitely sustained in, in, in their uh, increase in value because of the industrial uh, applications they have. You mean, if you, for example, also look at platinum, platinum has done very, very well also, mainly also on the back of, uh, you know, the increased car sales in China. I mean, they're booming, yeah? But the question is, is when we indeed get a hiccup in the economy and get a collapse, uh, you know, of the financial system, what is platinum going to do and what is silver going to do? I think silver is going to follow more gold and platinum might also get a special place in the end because it's probably going to be sell or sold off because people are going to say we're going to have less car sales. All right. And they need the cash, of course, to deal with the losses that they'll take. Heist, thanks so much Absolutely. for joining us. Heist Gronovagen from Silver Arrow Capital.